What's up? This is episode 30 of our Road to Unicum. Today we look at the T-37. This is a tier 6 American light tank. The gun is the best feature of the tank. It has excellent silver penetration of 150, which is comparable with a lot of tier 7 mediums since this tank does get tier 7 to 9 matchmaking and the gun handling is terrific. There is an autoloader, but I don't recommend using it because you lose too much silver penetration. The common theme with the American light tanks is the very thin hull armor, so you'll be very vulnerable to high explosive and also getting triple overmatched by, in this case, any gun of a caliber of 75mm or higher. The profile of this tank is particularly large, especially relative to other light tanks. You can see the ELC AMX, which is one of the smallest tanks in the game, and even the 1390 is quite a bit smaller than the T37, so you just got to be mindful about exposure. The camouflage value on the T37, as well as American tanks in general, is lower relative to its peers. It's plenty good to play vision control games against non-line tanks. So let's take a look at this tank in a Tier 7 Erlenberg replay. Obviously this is the best matchmaking this tank can get because it can see up to Tier 9 tanks. And I'm going to go spot the J lane from the E2. Area E2 allows you to have some affordance of hard cover in terms of a slope and you can both spot their tanks so your side can get early damage on them and also to see what their deployment looks like. We do have two tier 7 heavy tanks but one of them is going to commit suicide right off the bat and then the other one's going to be camping pretty hard although he does bail me out of a tight situation later. I'm watching our deployment and it's taking a long time for our tanks to move down along the 2 and 3 lanes so unfortunately the things that I light no one's going to be able to fire on them except for Artie. Normally I would move up right to these two fir trees that are in front of me but I don't want to actually get spotted because I know that no one's going to be able to fire on what I light except for me. So I spot an IS tank and then the 100Y has very soft side hull armor, it's very large so I get one shot in. I am spotted and they do have two arties so I need to be careful about not standing too much in one place and that shot right there illustrates the terrific gun handling even on the move. There isn't too much in the way of gun dispersion or aiming reticle bloom. This M4 keeps peeking out, he's very exposed so I drop him down to just a couple hit points and I do a leading shot there just because I'm expecting to poke out the building and then I finish him off. I do get lit with that last shot so again I need to move back and forth and rock just to make sure that I don't leave myself too easy of a shot for Artie. I don't want to hang out here too much longer. I'm now at a point where the enemy tanks are close enough to our tanks that they can self spot and if I peek up on the enemy tanks they're going to see me too so I'm going to go ahead and flex to the eastern side of the map you can see that they've got a ton of tanks pushing down the 9-0 line and also some tanks up on that ridge along the 9 line so I'm kind of feeling like this flank looks a little bit weak unfortunately that first snapshot on the T-37 misses if it had hit I would have had the opportunity to finish him off this panther tank is very high up on the ridge, he's very exposed after killing the comet and I want to get as many shots into him as possible. I land a tracking shot right there which is pretty lucky and I should keep firing and you'll notice my shot tends to drop a little bit. You know your, your aiming reticle when you've got it firing on a tank that's at a different elevation will automatically adjust. I should have just kept firing and adjusted for that manually especially since these other tanks there's no point in me trying to look at them since they're on the other side of the ridge. Their panther tank makes a mistake you know I keep hitting him and he keeps moving back and forth in the same area and taking fire. If you're getting shot at by regular tanks you, know, you really need to get off an exposed ridge like that so he ends up taking a lot of damage and getting killed. It looks like we're losing both flanks. This is pretty unfortunate. Our tanks to the west of me are probably getting bullied by their Soviet heavy tank and I'm feeling like I've got to do something and spot some tanks that will be vulnerable or possibly flank. The only problem is, is that they've got good coverage on both sides of the map. They take a shot at a tank, they're hoping that it'll come out around the edge of a building but that's actually just one solid wall of buildings but you know sometimes it can be kind of hard to tell where a building ends and I'll often in a fast reload tank such as this just go ahead and take the shot if I think they might be coming around the edge of a building. 
We spotted a panther which is pushing towards our base and his side is very exposed to me. So I'm able to land a couple damaging shots and then I make a mistake. I'm kind of hanging out here too long and I know about their IS tank. I know he's on this side of the map and he nails me so I'm now one shottable to a fair number of tanks that are remaining on this map. And their T-37 has flexed around to the western side of the map. He's now rushing me but because I'm moving less than he is my aiming reticle bloom is not as big and also I can set up for the first shot advantage when he comes around that building and I finish him off. He was probably feeling a little bit too overconfident since they did have a five tank lead. We were down by a score of five to ten and I'm in an unfortunate situation of I'm stuck now where this medium tank right in front of me. I do have a T-37 to hide behind for hard cover and I get hit you know, he's got the first shot advantage since he was already waiting for me. I can't move out from behind this building because I have to assume that the IS tank, since he's not spotted, is aiming at me. And then the Tiger comes and lands his first damaging shot. He bails me out. And that was huge because this springs me and allows me to consider flexing and using my vision control to gain an advantage. Some of the people in our chat on our team were complaining about the Tiger. It can be really hard to win, you know, when top tier heavies are camping like this. You know, while I do understand that the Tiger is not built to be a brawling tank in a tier 7 battle like this, he could have very easily bullied a lot of the tanks and if he had gone along the 1-2 line, that line probably wouldn't have collapsed to the extent that it did. The 100Y is at very high HP. I think he's, you know, only taken damage from me from that very early shot when I spotted him along the J lane, but there's a great opportunity because it looks like he's isolated. He's the only tank that we spotted on this side. My gut feeling is that the Hellcat is probably on the other side of the map or not nearby and the ARL-44 killed our E-25 who kept pushing towards their base. 100Y is really moving quickly but I spot their French arty as I'm moving over to flank the 100Y and so now I switch priorities to taking out the arty. It's really important to go ahead and take out the isolated arty, especially on an open map like this because it can really wreak havoc. I probably should have switched over to high explosive as I'm coming over here. The French arties and the American arties tend to have very paper thin hull armor so they're easy to penetrate with high explosive and in this case you know my high explosive rounds have plenty of penetration to go through the hull. I think even with the maximum lowest roll it's a guaranteed penetration. But my first AP shot sets the Lorraine on fire and then the second one picks him off. One of our arties is still alive. The other arty had just kind of obstinately just sat in base and kept camping and you know he really should have moved to a different area of the map or at least try to leverage the hardcover to sit on the other side of the ridge and force the 100 wide to come up and over him. Um, but instead he just kind of sat where he was the whole game and was easy to get picked off. You know, if you're playing an arty, I this is like one of those things I don't really understand how players can not have basic map awareness or know what to do since you know you have the ability to see the entire map based on other people's spotting and kind of you know move before you're going to be in too much of a bad situation. I put two shells into the 100 Y. I've been spotted so I need to back up quickly. I really don't have the hit points to trade and I'm even a little bit wary about peeking out because if he blind fires in this direction you know my tank is pretty huge it's like the the size of a barn so I don't want to give him an easy killing shot and thankfully our target one who has full hit points is pushing up on the 100 Y which is the right thing to do. Notice that alpha damage he just took of 243. It's possible that's from the ARL 44 but that tank is a little bit on the slow side so I'm guessing that's probably a shot from the Hellcat. The 100 Y is completely facing the other direction so that's an easy kill shot. Okay now we the Tiger has lit the Hellcat. I am spotted so I want to stay down behind this ridge and not expose myself to fire from that Hellcat's very accurate gun and it's been long enough now that I've dropped from his view and I can safely move up and use these trees as soft cover and camouflage to try to outspot him. One question mark we have is you know where is the Arrow 44 and I've just spotted him he's coming up the middle road and notice I don't take a shot on him quite yet because I don't have any kind of hard cover to work with. We also have a 3 to 2 tank advantage and one of our tanks is an arty so there really isn't a rush per se. We know exactly where these tanks are. Our arty is safe and they really should have sent a tank up along the 9-0 column to spot that uh, northeast corner because they knew that one of our arties was in base but the other one hadn't been spotted and they had already pushed 
along the northwest corner of the map. So they knew that our remaining arty wasn't going to be there. I am going to pick a different field of fire. With the tiger where he is, what I want to do is get perpendicular to him. So I'm going to hook around this ridge, which will allow me to get easy flanking shots on the sides of these tanks. And because of the distance, I'm going to always have the first shot advantage because I'm going to outspot them. The Hellcat didn't even see me until I fired. That was my last AP round. You can argue that I should have been using high explosive against the Hellcat because the shot is likely to penetrate, but either way, I've got enough high explosive rounds to put down the Hellcat. The Aero 44 continues to move up toward our base. I'm looking for the Hellcat first because that is the more dangerous of the two tanks, in particular because the Hellcat has very good penetration and pretty good gun handling. Whereas you know, the Aero 44 is a much more exposed, slower tank. I'm able to squeeze off a second shot there before the 44 can even return fire. I'm being patient and conservative. You know, I was just lit a moment ago. The AR-44 might still be aiming in my direction, or the Hellcat too, if he backed up around the building. And with my vision control advantage, it's important to be patient here. The Tiger spots the Hellcat. I get a nice shot in between that building and its roof and then finish off the Hellcat. I only have one shot left, but you know, at this point the game is pretty academic. It's just going to take one more shot to put the 44 down. I racked up 2,614 experience with premium. That's, as far as I know, the second highest number I've had on this account. And I had 3,600 damage, 7 kills, and 4 spots for the carry. Aside from being a good tank in public battles, the T-37 is also really popular for Tier 6 Strongholds, aka Fast Boys, since the tank has excellent mobility, vision control, superb gun handling, and really good gun depression. Compared to the M41 Bulldog, that's the tank that follows the T-37, I vastly prefer the next tank in the line, and even though I worked my way up to 3 marks of excellence on the T-37, I don't miss playing it. Let me know your thoughts on the tank, and in the next video we're going to take a look at the Bat Chat. That is my favorite tier 10 of all time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.